So my next guest is again from London, uh, Somerset House, uh, on the other side of the Waterloo Bridge. Very, very beautiful location. Very beautiful Congratulations. Location. Congratulations. So our last guest um, was from London, uh, more in the hipster area. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And you're not a hipster at all. Because your topic is totally different. You're not in the real-time media business. Yes. But now we're talking about slow media, slow journalism. Your name is Rob Orchard. That's right. And you're making a magazine yes. that is uh, completely trying to meet other goals, right? Exactly right. So it's a, a quarterly news magazine. It's called Delayed Gratification. Beautiful print-only magazine. Uh, and unlike everybody else, we're not trying to give the first reaction to stories, the knee-jerk reaction while something's still happening behind you, you're saying what's happening. Uh, what we try to do is look back on big stories after the dust has settled. So we return to the big stories of the last three months um, and we ask what happened next after the rest of the media moved on. So I see it in your eyes. You have a big passion for print. Yes. And you have a big passion for research, for finding stories, storytelling. Yes. Um, so is everything like completely the opposite that we what we're learning in the online and digital world? Well, here's the thing. <laughs> here's what, online and digital is fantastic. And I'm as addicted to my smartphone as everybody else, right? Like I wake up in the morning, I turn it on, and I'm basically looking at screens all day until I turn it off like just at night and fall, fall asleep. But Digital isn't everything. Digital can be overwhelming. Digital can be too much. It can be very difficult to know on digital what's important and what's not. Plus also it's very difficult to make money out of digital, right? I mean, the history of the last 20 years in, in terms of media is of organizations coming up with very, very, very clever digital propositions with amazing new technology and failing to fund them. Uh, so I quite like working in print. People still like to buy a physical product and you can still make money out of print. Plus also, I'm an old school journalist. I like the smell of print. I like the texture of the pages. And the battery di battery extension. Battery never dies. But you know what also, in all seriousness, like in your day, the amount of time that you spend staring at a screen and anxiously awaiting updates coming through. There's something very nice at the end of the day, sit in a nice chair with a print product. Nobody's kind of dragging you off to a video of a cat or anything. No emails coming, anything like that. It's just you and 4,000, 5,000 words of well-researched text. That's really nice. So it's a little bit like comparing uh, the print industry and the online industry with cigarettes and cigars. So the other, th the one product is what you what you consume on the go, and the other yeah. thing is like you're sitting there for 45 minutes. Yeah, exactly right. I think that's got, I mean, yeah, I suppose neither of them will give you cancer, which is nice. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess that. So cigarettes is immediate and throwaway and it's a hit. Whereas actually a cigar, maybe, you know, like three or four times a year, you sit there and you relish it, you know, with a nice big glass of red wine. Okay. So it sounds like a no-brainer, but um, where's the point uh, in terms of how do we produce slow journalism? So uh, you, you came up with the with a, with a, with a phrase, and I, I have a friend, he wrote a concept a couple of years ago, like the slow media manifesto, where it's exactly the same point that we have to produce slow journalism that can be consumed very slowly, like the slow food generation, where they really um, want to know what they're eating and they want to They, they want to eat delicious things. Yeah. Um, same for journalism, right? It's about quality. So actually, so like slow journalism is not is not my phrase. It's not something that I, I've kind of personally invented. There's lots of people have been talking about this slow news, slow media, slow journalism for a long time. Um, but for me, it's about. Um, It's really about a, a rallying cry for proper journalism. Because what we've seen over the last kind of 10 years is like journalists having their resources cut back, right? They've got le less time to, to spend in the field. They're being asked to make more and more stories. Loads of people are getting sacked. So actually, there's very few outlets and news organizations that are saying, do you know what? Go and find the truth. I'll give you a couple of months and I'll give you the money that you need to do it and come back and write me a beautiful, impressive, interesting, in-depth story. That's what journalism, like that was the ideal of it always. And the only reason that we need to talk about slow journalism is because that's kind of gone by the wayside in this digital, all exciting digital revolution. Some people say um, the quality does not depend on the platform. So you can also do quality journalism and slow journalism as an iPad app or as a, as a smartphone app or as a website. Uh, but would you agree or would you disagree that the packaging is more important for the value and the amount of money you make with the product than the, the, the type of journalism? Yeah, I 100% agree with you. The medium is... I mean, it's not irrelevant because I love print and I want to do a print magazine, but of course you could do fantastic long form stuff online, investigative stuff online, but you're absolutely right. For us, um, part of it is just being able to, to sell something. You know, so actually if you have a physical product, people will still pay for it. The other thing is with a magazine, you get to control 
the experience, right? The reader's experience. So they kind of come in and they can, you know, they can choose to go from the back or from the front or to dip in and out, but they're not constantly being pulled in different directions by other people. Well, they're not push notifications. No push notifications. No weird little things coming up from Facebook. No emails coming in and you have to kind of do something about it. Just you and this crafted thing that editors have spent three months really making really, really, really good. But you're right. Ultimately, the medium is not relevant. What is important is funding good journalism. And that's what's really difficult. So is this a type of a canvas or, or recommendation for other journalists to do great stuff online um, to make more money, to put the same journalism into a new format or maybe into an old format like print? Why not? Yeah, absolutely. I'm kind of surprised that there aren't more kind of... So in, in the UK, I don't know if it's the same in Germany, in the UK in the last 10 years, the sheer number of independent magazines that has opened up has been insane. Like two or three a week, you know, opening up all around the place. But very few of them have been focused on news. It's almost all lifestyle and kind of art photography and stuff like that. But I think, yeah, there's a real opportunity for that. Um, and what we've shown is that you can get a small uh, but kind of very loyal audience around you who will pay the cost of good journalism without any advertising. And the costs for producing the product, are they decreasing? Well, they are. Th is it more... Is it more Uh, is it more pricey to produce print content since not the, all the, the printing uh, facility, uh, facilities are, 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 are so no more publishing houses are printing so much so it's, it's oh, more interesting. yeah so um, no it's good it's fine there's still lots of printers there's still I mean there's still people doing lots of stuff and of course the more that you print the kind of the, the lower your cost per, per issue so that's fine I think kind of the print industry did lose quite a few people but now it's building back up again um, partly off the back of all of these independent magazines I just wanted to compare this with, uh, with, with, uh, with uh, CDs and phono oh, yeah. records uh, because it's more pricey to produce records in the, in sure, the meantime. Sure. No, I think it's fine. I think it's okay. Yeah. Also, a lot of the best printers are in Germany. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. So a great passion for print, yes. but also a great passion for journalism. Yes. And I, I find, uh, uh, just to sum it up, so what we just discussed is, um, as you, as you uh, agreed, the, the print format is not the is not defining the quality of the journalism, but it's defining the, the value or the, the, the amount of money the user are will to pay. I think that is our experience. Yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly right. Yeah. Rob Arkerson, thanks, thanks for so having me as a guest.